afternoon, and welcome to Stars of VANR. And today we've got a special treat. We've got in the studio the man himself, Bill Miller, with Vegas Lions, Vegas Lions Football. That's Hello, us. Bill. I'm, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, we jumped right in there with Thin Lizzy. Yeah, it makes me... We can learn this, right? I, well, I remember when that song came out. I was in high school. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, so... Brought back some memories, but my thank you very much for having me on, man. My Appreciate grandfather it. told me about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get that a lot. <laughs> so, so, Bill, you're here because we want to talk about your show. When is your show? Ah, well, uh, for those of you not in the know, uh, every Wednesday from noon Pacific Daylight Time to 1 p.m. And where can I hear it? You can hear it at VegasAllNetRadio.com. Wow, that's great. So, what is Vegas Lions football? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, Vegas Lions football is a, uh, a component of Southern Nevada Football LLC, which is the, uh, the parent company that my business partner, Jeff Belknap, and I uh, started. I was wondering if you were going to get around to mentioning uh, him. Well, absolutely. <laughs> I got you know, to mention my, my, my homeboy. There you go. Road dog. <laughs> All around good egg. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Jeff and I uh, first met when we were um, working in the front office for the Vegas Kings. Right. Uh, which was a, uh, another professional minor league football team uh, here in Las Vegas. And um, Jeff was, um, on, yeah, I think he joined the Kings in, 2000, I want to say 2007. I came on board in 2009. And really it was, uh, it was an opportunity. Um, I happened to be driving along Decatur, and uh, the Kings at the time were having a, uh, a tryout at, at Fountain Park. And I decided I pulled over, and uh, I had been going to see some of the local football, which right. was, uh, you know, kind of a you know a little scrappy. Uh, but it looked like, you know, uh, these guys really had their, you know, their, their stuff together. So um, I met Jay Haywood, who at the time was president of the Vegas Lions football team, and the owners, uh, which was uh, uh, Prentice Caesar, and uh, Richard Mapp. And I just said, you know, I, I liked what they were doing. I, I really liked the way that they were taking more of a professional approach uh, to it. And uh, I said, you know, I had some time on my hands, and I just asked them, I said, listen, if you guys need any help, volunteer, or anything like that. And, and they said, absolutely. You know, are you a fan? I go, yeah, I'm a football fan. So they said, okay, we'll, we'll figure something out. Turns out my first uh, real job with them was, uh, the scoreboard operator. Oh, cool. Well, he, he kind of alluded to it. He goes, listen, you'll have the best seat in the house. And I, oh, okay. <laughs> that well, should have told you right there. Should have <laughs> had an idea that I wasn't just going to be sitting there, you know, watching. Right. And, uh, and, and But it turned out to be a lot of fun. And I got to know, uh, you know, uh, the, the owners and Jay and, uh, and of course, uh, Jeff. And um, that um, operation, unfortunately, wrapped up in 2010. But on their way out, uh, they had we made our way to the championship game in 2010. It was a, a incredible team that they had put together. But both owners, being relatively young, uh, decided in 2011 that they were going to try something different. Now, hindsight being what it is, 2020, you know, Jeff and I should have made them an offer right there on the spot. Right. They had uh, they had an established team. They had a following. Um, they uh, they had uh, in terms of uniforms, uh, really quality gear. And at the time, we just, you know, kind of said, well, let's see who else maybe you could use our help. And, uh, you know, we kind of uh, puttered around with a couple of other teams. Uh, and finally, in 2013, we realized, you know, uh, if we're going to do this right, we need to open up our own shop. And uh, that's when we established uh, Southern Nevada Football as a parent company and the first entity being uh, the Vegas, the, T-H-E, Vegas Lions football team. There you go. And the rest is history. I, I I got this off of your website, and it was your mission statement, and I really liked it. So I'd like to read this, and I'd like to get your input. Certainly. Okay, so this is the mission statement of the uh, Vegas Lions football, right? That's us. Okay. As a AAA professional football team, it is our mission on the field to provide a platform for young adult men to not just meet, but to exceed their athletic goals in a professional environment off the field to set a positive and professional example to our fans and both private and corporate donors.
by being active in community-wide volunteerism and mentorship programs. In order to achieve these goals, we must seek out and retain not only the most qualified individuals on and off the field, but corporate and community sponsors who share our vision. And I really like that. That, that really kind of hit home um, because it's kind of what we're trying to do here at, at Vegas All Net Radio. Right. And can you expand on that? I mean, what, what, why, what made you come up with these concepts for your mission statement? Getting to know uh, a lot of these young men, you know, they typically fall into uh, a handful of categories. Um, you know, you have the, uh, the excellent athlete, uh, who, for whatever reason, uh, you know, once he got out of high school, uh, was unable to secure a scholarship, and that could be, you know, a, a different reasons: a uh, uh, poor SAT score, bad grades. Oh, right. um, oftentimes, we find out uh, uh, became a father. Uh, sometimes more than once, um, um, brushes with the law, um, and at the same time, you know, there's also the where the parents have said, you know, we really, you know, we need you to go to work, uh, you know, and you know, we're, we're, we're kind of struggling here. And so it, there are reasons for that lost opportunity. Secondly, Nevada is one of those very strange states where there is no junior college or it was referred to as JUCO football. I mean, I come from California where, you know, JUCO football is king. Yeah. That, <laughs> and it's the prime recruiting grounds for a lot of Division I schools. So we were looking at, you know, well, what's happening with these young men? Well, a lot of them are leaving state and going either to um, Utah, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, or California to attend junior college, where often unless they can establish residency there with a relative, uh, they end up having to pay out-of-state tuition. Right. Uh, and, you know, so we you know, felt that this was an opportunity. First of all, while we were with the Vegas uh, Kings, uh, we, uh, we fully vetted um, our agreements with these individual young men to ensure that we were not jeopardizing <clears throat> their college eligibility. Uh, so we knew that not by not paying them, you're not triggering anything that is going to somehow pop up on the NCAA radar. Uh, the minute that someone is a you know picks Jim an agent, Jim Thorpe comes to mind. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you, know. you know, classic example. Yeah, and uh, you know, so by not paying them. Uh, by not giving them a, uh, a stipend uh, and by them not having an agent, their um, eligibility clock is not ticking by playing with the Vegas Lions. Uh, secondly, we knew that whether we like it or not, uh, and we do like the fact, we are mentors. And for a lot of these young men, um, there's, uh, you know, there's, there's a tendency for them to um, unfortunately grow up in a lot of single parent families where they are oftentimes dominated by women. Right. You know, you have uh, maybe big sister, you've got mom, you've got aunties, you've got grandma. And then a lot of times, you know, there's, there's no male figure uh, in the house or male role models. So, you know, if we knew that at a certain point, um, the reality has got to set in with these young men. You know, the, the NFL is a crapshoot. Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, the biggest recruiting grounds for the NFL, of course, is Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three football. That's their minor leagues. And, you know, the semi-pro football has often had a real negative connotation to it. You know, it's almost like someone pictures a bunch of guys sitting in a parking lot drinking beer before yep. the game yep. and then strapping them, going out there and stumbling into each other. We've always preferred the term professional minor league football. That's why if you go to our website, uh, our Facebook, our website, thevegaslions.com, and that's the catchphrase for all of our social media access, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, and Periscope, uh, you will never see semi-pro. Uh, you will always see professional minor league football, and we stress that with our players. Uh, secondly, we make sure that they understand going in this very well might be their NFL. So therefore, make the most of it. You know, we know that uh, in any given season, there may be uh, a handful of candidates that have that opportunity to maybe take their game to the next level. Right. Now, the most immediate next level for uh, um, our style of football, which is NFL rules, um, you know, we can carry 50-man, 50 53-man rosters, um, It is that 
is probably arena, uh, either arena one or arena two. And that's the most immediate. And then you can get into the possibilities of there's some new satellite um, paid uh, minor league teams that are starting to pop up on the East Coast uh, and also on the Southwest. Do you think they'll make it out here before too long? Or oh, absolutely. Do you see signs of that happening? Absolutely. You know, And I think that one is because there are a number of leagues such as our teams such as ourselves around the country. Uh, some obviously operating on a little bit higher level than others mm -hmm. and uh, you know with maybe different directions and may also with different methodology you know but we've always you know said one we're going to stick to our principles which is uh, you know our mission statement uh, we're going to remind these young men that first and foremost they're members of the community and that the major their full-time job for the majority of their life is not going to be playing football it's going to be a member of our community and therefore, you know, you, you have to take certain responsibility, you know, you, and you have to be held accountable for your actions. You know, we get guys sometimes who are incredibly talented, completely uncoachable. And you know why they're not, you know, on some roster somewhere and why they're still here, you know, maybe just kind of struggling with the local team or, or just living it, you know, living it out and hoping that somebody pick them up. You know, and we're not prepared to, you know, to put up with anybody no matter what their level of talent. If you can't follow simple instructions, if you cannot be coached, you cannot play for the Vegas Lions football team. Well, it doesn't, doesn't help the rest of the players to have someone like that on the team, does it? Absolutely. You know, you know no, believe it or not, most, the majority of these young men want structure of some kind. Yep. And they may be a little, you know, blustery and, you know, and, and I, I think to play football you have to have a certain ego. Uh, I anyway. would hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, and at the end of the day, you know. Otherwise, you get run over. Yeah, and oftentimes they're their biggest fans. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, you know, you find that the more that, you know, we instill discipline, we naturally, we, there's a, a level of attrition. We lose players because we're not willing to put up with nonsense. Our very first year, we started with 50 plus guys. By the time the season ended, we were down to, I think, about 22. Wow. Maybe twenty three, and when you get to the nitty gritty like that, you know you you suddenly you've got, if you're lucky, linebackers lining up as offensive linemen, but sometimes you've got DBs lining up as <laughs> offensive yeah. linemen, and 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 it could get uh, you know it could get pretty rough out there, but we have never you know compromised you know our principles. Uh, secondly, we before each season starts there's an orientation process that we go through and we establish something we call the ROAR program uh, R-O-A-R which is Responsibility uh, Opportunities Achievement and Respect program that each player receives an outline of prior to the season starts and it's designed to not just simply talk about you know what we expect of them but also what they should be expecting of themselves why you know some of the bad behaviors that they may have ways to you know minimize that you can you know and we you know we let every young man know look there's nothing you can do with our past can't change what happened you know 15 minutes ago yet alone what happened 15 months ago or five years ago you know but you've got a clean slate as far as your future is concerned and you can write the script um, we let our players know that at some point or another they will be speaking uh, you know in public uh, we do a lot of volunteer programs with youth uh, uh, leagues in terms of setting up camps. And you suddenly, you have to be in that position where you have to be able to communicate with people. And it, you can't be, you know, every other word can't be an F-bomb uh, or an N-bomb or, you know, just the way that you normally speak with each other. You've got to learn to clean it up. At the end of the day, we run a very family-oriented uh, and themed program. Well, it, it sounds to me like what you're trying to accomplish here is not only create or, or help um, young athletes, but also create better human beings. Yeah, first and foremost, you know, these, these individuals are going to be in our community. Yep. You know, what, what would you rather have? You know, a, a 275-pound, you know, linebacker who's also crazy? Uh, or who has I'd know, rather not have little one of or those. no respect, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, or do you want somebody, you know, at, you know, at a certain point, you got to fish or cut bait. Yep. You know, we're willing to work with you to a certain extent, but, you know, as we used to say, look, you know, your mother may have carried you for nine months, but, you know, if you can't shape up, we're only going to carry you for one. There you go. Yeah. And we're going to have to take a break right now, and we'll be back in about two minutes with Bill Miller. Thank you. 
Welcome back to Stars of BANR. And I'm here with Bill Miller from Vegas Lions Football. Um, we've been talking about um, your players and, and how this thing got started. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is, what is the age range of your players? What are your youngest and oldest players that you... Minimum of 18. Okay. Yeah, you have to be at least 18 or over. Uh, it is uh, an adult league. Right. Uh, an adult, uh, you know, in terms of the level of football that we're playing at, it, it's designed for adult. The optimum age... Uh, is uh, probably 18 to 25. What's your oldest player? Ooh, um, I think that would probably be, I want to say Troy Shepard, uh, who's a, uh, a Metro police officer. Uh, and I think Troy is 43 or 44. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, and plays because he loves the game. Yeah. Kudos to him. Yeah. You know, in fact, you know, he has uh, his oldest son is in high school now. So, uh, and he plays. Oh, wow. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and I'm, you know, anytime, you know, I, I see Troy, I just say, man, you know, you're like my, one of my heroes. Yeah. You know, because Lord knows I wouldn't be out there. <laughs> no, Even when either. I was 45, <laughs> yeah. which was 13 years ago, I still wouldn't <laughs> have been out there. But he's got the ability, he's got the size. Uh, he uh, plays linebacker. and uh, But he also has, the you know, the discipline. Yeah, you know, and uh, which is you know something that oftentimes you know we we have to sort of drive home with these young men, and you know there's every now and then you know you the, the worst thing you you know should be the toughest job should be to uh, you know have to cut or release a player, and it's it's not supposed to be easy, you know, but oftentimes uh, you know you have to make that decision you have to make it quickly because you can kind of see that they're just not getting it. It's you know it's it's about them. You know, uh, it, it's about me, me, me. Like we just call them opera singers. You know, yeah. what about me? What about me, 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 me? And you know, it clearly it's not a team, uh, you know, issue as far as they're concerned. Um, this year we've been very fortunate. We have not had a, an abundance of instances. Typically, what happens is young men will walk away from the program if they feel that they're, you know, well, I'm not getting a playing time. Or right. Like that. And you know, they don't appreciate the end of the day. You know, else. you. Yeah. you everyone can't be a starter yeah and if you can't make it to practice and we only practice twice a week um, you really can't start now unless of course you have a job you know or maybe you're you're in school right now now there's some acts you know absences obviously you know we can but in terms of their employers you know we'll awfully approach them and say well listen did you know this young man plays football because a lot of times they have not even shared that right with their employer right. Well, that helps two ways. One, it lets them know that, oh, gee, I didn't know. And, you know, he might very well be a football fan, and yeah, sure, I'll give him the, the, those time slots. We'll replace it with something else. Yeah. But also, they might end up being a sponsor. So, uh, yeah, you hey, never, listen. You never know. We're, we're, and, well. and speaking of sponsors, I, I'd really like to talk a little bit about the show itself now. Yeah. The excellent. radio show. And, yeah. and what is the basic premise of your show? What What are you trying to accomplish with your radio show? Uh, one to um, to have that continued fan base throughout the year, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, we started in March of 2014, uh, which was um, almost a year after um, uh, the uh, we started the team. Right, and um, we it was an excellent opportunity uh, to really just be able to put that information out there. We didn't know of anybody else that was doing it, and we still don't know certainly locally. Right, uh, and then. Early on, man, it was uh, it was a struggle. Uh, I remember Jeff and I looking at each other and going, like, "Hi, God's name, are we going <laughs> to fill this hour up?" And you know, looking at each other, so what? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Well, the the premise of the show is to uh, promote professional minor league football, and we invite other you know team owners on um, from other leagues. Uh, some uh, some of the owners that we've known over the years. You you do have some interesting guests from time to time. We do, yeah. and we also just to talk about sports in general, and. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, the, sh the show is, we have a lot of fun with it. Yes, you do. And we talk about all kinds of sports and the latest sports, uh, the l latest incidents. And usually, <laughs> by the time we get here on Wednesday, something crazy has already happened early on in the week. And that in itself can kind of take on a life of its own. Um, we, Jeff and I are huge sports fans other than football. Uh, I'm a huge baseball fan. and Go Royals. Yeah, I was just, uh, yeah. just about to ask you. Yeah, and but aside from that, we now are getting, you know, uh, it's an opportunity for our sponsors to come on 
and uh, to help promote their products because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we could not exist doing what we're doing without the support. And we've been blessed with some really uh, some folks have really come on board and really helped us out That's you know, great. over the last couple of years. So let me ask you, um, do you have a, a favorite show or a favorite guest that you've had on the show in a year and a half? One yes. that stands out that you really, really enjoyed? or Yes. Um, and, God, I'm trying to remember his name. He was the, um, uh, the third man in the ring for the Pacquiao uh, Mayweather fight. Uh, Kenny... The, the official uh, and uh, Rick Rosen who is a, a contributor from time to time right. uh, to the show uh, Rick knew Kenny Bayless I think that's okay. his name and um, he uh, knew him and said listen I can have him on Wednesday after the fight and he's on vacation he was in Puerto Rico I mean he could talk about it but you know there's some things he can't right right but, Absolutely. And I said, of course. Yeah. And it turned out to be a great show because, one, we had his insight into what it was like to be, you know, cl- clearly the fight of the century. Right. At least that's the way it was promoted. Yeah. Uh, and to kind of get his insight, you know, from in the ring, you know, having to deal with the hype, the fact that, you know, he, he was not in a position to really conduct very many interviews. Um, you know, they, they worry about people, you know, I guess, reaching in and influencing uh, uh, these decisions but sure. he, he turned out to be a fantastic guest because he's done a lot of big fights over the years and uh and that was one that really stood out and but uh other than that i think that the one that we had <laughs> we um uh our first show that we brought in uh some of the players and players make for great radio because one uh, most of them are really sheepish. They'll talk big and wolf yeah. while they're on the field and get in here right. and they're looking around like that <laughs> yeah. deer in a headlight look. And I'm, we were telling them, relax. You know, I'm not going to ask you, well, where were you Wednesday night at 2.30 p.m.? <laughs> uh, and so then then their personalities start to come out. And because they're social butterflies, um, they're calling, calling. Right. Phones start ringing. You know, because then their buddies are calling in and saying, oh, hey, yeah, man, that's my boy. And, you know, this, that, and that. And to see their start, their personalities really start to come out, and uh, you know they get into it. To me, the most fun we ever have is when we have players on the show. Cool. Yeah. How about your worst? Worst. Oh God. Let's see. Um. <laughs> and you don't don't you don't have to name names. No, I'm going to go with the and and Lawrence will. Uh, yeah, this was about a month ago, and I was it. You know, Jeff was traveling. Uh, the two guests I had that planned on coming, one coming in, didn't, it was a no-show. The other one was going to call in, called and said he couldn't call in. <laughs> and it was, we were, and I was dying here. We were, I was trying to talk about it, you know, then we were talking about college. Finally, when we got to the bottom of the hour, I said, you had that interview with uh, Jake Equit, who's uh, our, our Australian punter. Right. And... Um, you know, can you, and then the, with the other two guys, Kevin and uh, I forgot the other young man, Eric. And he said, yeah, he pulled that segment up and it worked because one, they're still with the team, which yeah. is, it always helps, but they were funny and they were having a really good time. And so then when we got to nearly, you know, the, what we call the knockout round, the fourth round, the knockout round, I was, then I was kind of able to say, okay, fine. You know, I only got like eight minutes left. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this and I can get the hell out of here. It's like we <laughs> talked about on the break. Yeah. It's like having those guests that you have to draw everything out of. So. Yeah. And early on, you know, with players, you usually do have to, you know, like you know, they say, you know, so, hey, so how long have you been playing football? Well, about 11 years. You can say, all right, man, come on now. You know, it's radio. You got to yeah. you know, work with me on that. Then they start to kind of kick in the gear. Then you can't shut them up. Yeah. So what do you see What do you see for the uh, Lions this year? Uh, well, we're in the middle of our, um, uh, our fall season. All right. Uh, and uh, we're currently 3-1. and one. Uh, Should be 4-0, oh, and oh, but, uh, you know, things happen. But we're 3-1. and one. Uh, We just uh, came off a win last Saturday against the uh, the Mesa Arizona Hornets and we're going to have about a two week bye because we have had uh, cancellations uh, from a couple of teams which as you start to get later in the fall right um, they it just starts to happen teams are either unable to travel can't secure a feel um, so and it's you know how how often do you travel for uh, the games this year we haven't we've had one away game 
Really? You know, we've been very fortunate. Um, and Probably been, because everybody wants to come to Vegas? <laughs> yeah. That's what we hope. Yeah. And, you know, and for us, you know, since a lot of the teams we play are in California. Right. Uh, or in, uh, in Arizona. How many teams are in your league? Or well, we're playing an independent schedule this year. Okay, you know, for cool. the fall, we decided we would uh, book the teams that we wanted to uh, play, as opposed to uh, having some of the restrictions that are placed on being in the league. And you know, and unfortunately, we've had some um, some not real pleasant experiences with some of the leagues. There's oftentimes a, a lot of promises in terms of what they're going to do for you, and right. after they get their league fee, uh, they sort of like you know kind of blend into the background. Uh, but you know, this is—it's uh, been an opportunity for us to play some unique teams, uh, and uh, you know, I think that we're probably our next game might be November eighth. Okay. And we always ask folks to go to the website, which is uh, thevegaslions.com. com. That's Sunday, isn't it? Right. Uh, That's—I think the eighth is. Well, I'm looking at my watch. It is Sunday. Yeah, it's a yeah. Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Thank and, you, Lawrence. And that we can always be, uh, count on Lawrence. Yeah, try to. Try, we definitely want to try to make that an early game. So yeah. you know, not taking away too much from NFL. Football. Well, and and the weather must be getting nice now for it. So oh, it was absolutely beautiful Saturday. Yeah. I think it was about eighty degrees. Yeah, no kidding. You know, and uh, you know, and you know, and unfortunately, it typically it's not until the end of October before things start to cool down. I know. Doesn't yeah. that suck? <laughs> well, which is why we've Keeps made, out a, the riff raff, we've made an on, a, a conscious decision going forward that, you know, in starting in 2016, uh, we're only going to play spring league, spring ball. Okay. Uh, one, um, you're not competing for field space uh, with uh, high schools or youth. Uh, two, the weather is spectacular, so you can have day games and not have to worry about sitting out in 105 degree exactly. heat. And, uh, and there's, you know, for football fans, it's an opportunity to watch football in the off season. Great. All right. Well, we're going to take another break here for a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll see you back in two and two. And I guess we're back. Um, okay, Bill, I've got this off of your website again. This uh, follows your mission statement, and it is the goal of the Vegas Lions football team. Yes, sir. And I'd like to read that because, like I said, like the mission statement, it, it kind of jumped out and impressed me. It's... Uh, and from what I've seen here at the station and, and you guys, um, this is more than just words on paper to you guys. And, and that I, I really like that. So here we go. As each of us has that one individual goal in life, so do the young players, coaches, and staff who commit to the Vegas Lions football team. And for the 18-year and older standout athlete, it's trying to reach their goal, be that in collegiate or professional-level programs. Each young man, coach, and staff member will have the opportunity to utilize the professional resources that our organization will make available to them to assist them in reaching their goals. More importantly, for the players, our objective is to ensure that these young men gain structure and purpose to their off-the-field lives. No one can play football at this level forever. The majority of their lives will be spent in the community at large as productive and contributing members of society. That's some pretty heavy stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, being a sports fan is one thing, but it sounds to me like, it, 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 like I said, from what I've seen here, you guys actually live this, and you are trying to create a better human being or a better individual through this football team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, um, we've been very fortunate uh, to have uh, a couple of uh, um, one particular corporate uh, partner. Like to call them, which is Securitas, the uh, security firm. Um, we've calculated they've hired over a hundred young men uh, since we started the Vegas. Lines, wow! Uh, from your from your players. Our, from our players. Wow! And we've also uh, sent them over players from other teams. You know, uh, you know one, uh, you're not really doing anyone very much good if you're unemployed. Exactly. And you're certainly not going to make a living uh, playing uh, for the Vegas Lions because we don't compensate anyone. Here. Right. So, so they have to love the game. They have to, begin to love with. the game. You know, you you have to. You know, we realize that, and for a lot of these young men, so much has been kind of taken away from them, and uh, people have you know oftentimes used them in terms of you know paying uh, to play that sort of thing. And you know, this year we have managed to keep the um, uh, the dollars down to very very low with regard to. Uh, what we required of them in terms of the, tr- the tryout for the team, which right. was fifty dollars, 
And if they wanted to keep their jersey this year, we decided to do that because we got new gear. Uh, then they would pay an additional fifty dollars, and they get to keep their jersey at the end of the year. Oh, that'd That's be cool. It. And so, but drilling home the point is that you know you you've got to be responsible, and you know that means you know whatever you want to do. You know we find out just in talking to a lot of these young men that. Uh, many don't know how to put together a resume, so we offer help with uh, you know writing a resume. Uh, we write letters of recommendation uh, for for some individuals if they require one. Um, you know we l- show them you know look you know you come to an interview. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to have. You know you don't get there on time. You have to get there early. If you're there on time, you're late. You're late. Yes. You know, and despite the fact that you may have filled out an online application. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have to fill out a hard copy when you get there. So yes. make sure you get there early. Have your resume with you. Have your references. You know, when you walk in, smile. You know, oftentimes the first person, and I know from, you know, recruiting and just, you know, in my corporate life, that the, so oftentimes the first person that, you know, an employer is going to get feedback from, believe it or not, everybody, it's the receptionist. Yes. You know, they're going to ask you, so, well, yep, he, you know, he came in, you know, he was early, uh, he was upbeat, he had a smile. Uh, well, how was he dressed? Yeah, you know, he fit. You know, he didn't have a suit on, but it was, it was a press shirt, right. slacks. You know, we let them know how to dress appropriately. You can't go in there, you know, with jeans, you know, it's best to overdress. You don't need to go out and get a suit, but at least have a dress shirt, a collared shirt, maybe a tie, a pair of slacks, but make sure they fit. This is not about wearing pants hanging off your ass. Yeah. Um, or, you know, tennis shoes, you know, you can go to Ross and invest, you know, plug for Ross. Hey, we can use you as a sponsor, <laughs> uh, but you can get you a pair of dress shoes. That's 702-483-4444. Ask for Bill Miller. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, but you can get, you know, a pair of dress shoes, uh, you know, a pair of slacks, uh, a shirt, belt, tie, and, you know, probably under 50 bucks. It sounds, sounds to me like you guys spend quite a bit of time with these players other than just football so i mean this is how many how many staff or members do you have uh this year we've got a um staff of let's see one two three four five six we have a staff of six uh, uh, that's it from head coach yeah but w- just a quick shout out also to our uh, medical contributors this year uh dr uh, Rhonda basheron who's an orthopedic surgeon here in town and dr uh, bobby donatelli and they, they donate their time? They have donated their time this wow. year. Um, Dr. Bob, as we call him, or Bobby D, because he's from Queens. Yeah. Um, he has, uh, you know, assisted us with a questionnaire with regard to uh, concussions you know, so that we could establish a protocol. And the goal was to find out what has happened in their past and then are they suffering from any symptoms now. And the, guy, the goal is, as we told them, you, you've got to be truthful. And he said, listen, I expect you know, people to kind of fudge down in terms of what happened. Because of if you played football, you've suffered a blow to the you head. You bet. <laughs> so for somebody to say, nope, never had it, never had a headache, yeah. they're not being truthful. So our goal was to um, establish that before the season start and perhaps identify someone who, you know, maybe it's time to hang it up. But uh, for, you know, they both run the Orthopedic Sports and Medicine Clinic uh, just straight down Sahara and Tanaya. Uh, They're both very tops in their fields. And our first, very first game, um, you know, one, two of the players suffered, uh, well, one broke both bones in the lower leg. Holy moly. On a very freak play. And he went straight to the hospital. He had surgery the following morning at 10 a.m. But two others uh, suffered a pretty bad sprain. And Dr. Basheron just said, listen, uh, just bring them over to the clinic. She opened up her clinic and took x-rays Wow! of the young man. And we've never had that kind of medical consultation. Plus, we have two full-time trainers, uh, which they were uh, actually you know helped us bring on board. So our goal has always been to try and take care of these young men to the best of our ability. Uh, but this year, you know, we've really been in a position to have these two on our staff, and we can't thank them enough. In fact, uh, folks, the very first Wednesday of every month is uh, dedicated to both Dr. Bob and Dr. Basheron to come on and uh, you know discuss sports injuries, uh, rehabilitation, medicine in general. 
Uh, but they also have invited on uh, some of their uh, uh, past clients. Uh, and Dr. Bob had uh, invited uh, Marquise Grissom, former Major League Baseball player. Cool. He was on uh, the, the last first Wednesday uh, of the month show, and he talked about how Dr. Bob really helped him. Uh, and uh, so it's opened up some avenues for us to, to get some interesting guests on. And, uh, you know, but contributing to what they've done as far as just, you know, keeping these guys in, in the best of shape and giving them excellent care. We could not have asked for two better individuals. And that that <clears throat> kind of fits in with what uh, Aaron and Ricky and I have always said uh, on our Vegas Unwrapped show on Thursday nights, <clears throat> is that I don't think people realize the dedication to some of the people in the community here and how much people of Las Vegas give back to the community you know, I mean, they think we're all a bunch of uh, mobsters and people <laughs> in the uh, witness protection program and, you know, gamblers and hookers and pimps and all that. And I, I don't think that they realize the full impact of, of you know, we've seen some, some pretty awesome stuff here in this community. Well, I think people have that impression that, um, you know, Vegas is the strip. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's gambling. It's uh, what, you know, and then, of course, the... Uh, you know the what happens in Vegas stays right. in Vegas that that type of thing. So, but most people don't really get it that you know this is a you know it's it's made up of neighborhoods and uh, you know it's it's not and neighbors just a, and neighbors and you know I'm now running into people who've actually you know born here. You know, years and years ago when I used to come to Vegas, you know, you never knew anybody who was actually right. born here. They always came. Yeah, their car broke down. Yeah, and, you know, hey, they, I was they, here. Yeah. You know, I came here to try and make some money. Yep. And, uh, you know, well, I decided I better just stay here and get a straight job. You know, but, you know, I've been here since 06. And I, um, I came from L.A. And uh, my mom had retired out here in 94. And I felt that, you know, since she was kind of getting up in age and I'm an only child, and right. I probably I would feel much more comfortable being here and being close by. You know, now she's going to probably outlive me. Yeah. And, you know, she's, she's 81 and, you know, she's going to keep chugging along. And, but I think that, you know, it's – I like Las Vegas. I really do. I do, too. Um, I love it when the weather's yeah. like this, yes. especially. And the nights are great, too. I love the desert at night. So yeah. Something magical about it, so – Anyway, um, we're going to take just a, a, an early break here, Lawrence, uh, and then when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about, uh, about you personally. All right. Be happy to. All right. Thanks, folks. We'll see you in two and two. And the boys are back. Bill Miller and myself here on Stars of EANR. And in the little bit of time that we got left, Bill, I want to talk about you. Ah, okay. So what do you do? What do I Besides do? Besides... Vegas Lions football. Well, my day job is uh, I'm VP of operations uh, for a company called Air Ocean Pros. Uh, it's a cargo management and logistics company uh, based out of Huntington Beach. Um, I've been in transportation for 35 plus years. Uh, it's, uh, it's always been my um, uh, fallback. And it really helps to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, that's always nice. <laughs> it's isn't always it? nice to have yeah. a day gig, uh, you know. So uh, you might say that uh, you're actually a mover and a shaker, huh? I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's you know, and I I've been doing it so long now, and uh, and I enjoy what I do. Uh, it's it's afforded me an opportunity to uh, to travel um, around the world. Yep. Uh, and that's a lot of places I probably would not have been able to. Uh, necessarily afford to go to or would prefer not to on my own dime so it's always nice to go on a corporate dime. of course and um i you know it helped you know put my two sons through school and um, you know my my ex-wife and i we had a very nice comfortable life and so it's you know it, and i um it helps to certainly to deal with particularly with regard to prospective right sponsors right because believe me if you if you can take a no in transportation, you can take a no anywhere. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're oftentimes dealing with some, some you know some pretty hard characters. You, uh, do, you, do you do much uh, shipping from overseas? A lot. China. Um, we um, Air Ocean Pro is the way it's structured, and they're also a by the way a sponsor, uh, corporate sponsor of the Vegas cool. Lions football team. Uh, well, and good. They believe in your job, and they yes, believe in your. Yes, I'm your, glad they do. Yeah, that's excellent. <laughs> but. We uh, we're kind of a, a, a unique boutique uh, logistics provider. Uh, there's uh, we specialize in Hawaii, uh, for instance, where a lot of companies don't. 
but we also handle a lot of what consider offshore projects. Uh, that is uh, projects, cargoes moving from, let's say, Brazil to Japan, where it's actually never, you know, coming near the, the gotcha. United States. Uh, we've got some excellent corporate clients, uh, and um, we handle a lot of uh, project uh, cargo, uh, oversized, uh, you know, and that's really where, um, you know, you've got to really put on your, your, your thinking cap. I mean, I, I let our prospective clients know anybody can move cargo. Our planes don't go any faster than anyone else's. Our trucks don't go any faster than anyone else's. And our boats don't jump up out of the water and fly across the sea. Uh, but when something goes askew, and in if it, it's, it's, you know, any way you look at it, it's a human um, being oriented. Mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen. Yeah. You may move 100 shipments, you know, that 99th one, you know, might. That's when you've, you've got to think outside the box. You've got to be, you know, proactive. You know, you've got to get in front of it. And that's what we remind our clients is that, you know, it's not going to be. I've been trying to call Bill Miller. I can't reach this guy. Yeah. He just disappeared on me. Yeah. I don't know where my freight is. And that's the last thing we want. Secondly, it, it afforded me an opportunity to really meet a lot of different cultures and a lot of different people, and I still foster a lot of uh, business relationships and friendships uh, uh, around the globe, uh, some people I still can just touch bases with. And as strange as it may sound, the, the, the shipping community, particularly what we do a lot of is ocean cargo and air cargo, it's a relatively small fraternity. Yes, it is. And you, I'm constantly running into somebody who says, you know, oh, yeah, do you know so-and-so? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, I haven't talked to him in ages. How's he doing? Oh, he's doing great. You know, he's with this company. And, you know, people kind of may move around, but it's very difficult to get out of this business. I did at one time. Uh, I was uh, in New York at the time. I'd been transferred out there. And the company that I was with um, laid me off shortly after moving to, and I would live in New Jersey. And so I'm going like, oh, great. And I ended up getting a job with a company called Metallurg Incorporated. It was a metal ferro alloy trading company. And um, so for basically three years, I really kind of stepped away from it. But it was, it was a real three-year education. Uh, I took so much in that three years in working with that company uh, that, uh, that I still use today you know, with regard to football, with regard right. to transportation. Uh, because it was, uh, it was just the way the company was run. It was extremely professional. Uh, Beautiful offices. All right, my office was on East 39th between Park Avenue and Madison. That must have been tough. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> great. Uh, you know, other than the commute, yeah. because I lived in um, just outside of New Brunswick, uh, New Jersey, uh, in uh, Franklin Township. So I was taking a train in, but it was just the um, uh, that atmosphere. It was challenging, yet uh, you know, it was very rewarding. And to this day, uh, Albert Hyun uh, was uh, my. Um, uh, VP, direct VP, and it was one of the you know, smartest people I've uh, I've ever met in my life. You know, other than Joe Kennedy, hope he hopefully he's listening. But both you know people that I still consider friends with and still can reach out to and still will say you know yeah yeah well tell me about it. what's going on and just kind of run things past them. And they've always been there. You know, uh, both are retired, but both. Uh, you know, I still consider friends, and uh, Joe, in fact, he and his wife moved here uh, to Las Vegas about three years ago. Yeah. One, of, one of the things, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, one of the things about logistics or what you do is you can pretty much do it anywhere, can't you? Anywhere. Yeah. I can work uh, out of our office, yeah. or I can work from home. Right. You know, and, um, and that's especially now since so many transactions are now paperless. Right. Uh, you know, you before, you know, customs required uh, that... Uh, and you had to maintain files for seven years. Hard copies. Hard copies. Right. So you would have, you know, old container loads just full of <laughs> files sitting until the first opportunity they had. And then it was like seven years in a day, they start, <laughs> start destroying them uh, just to free up space. So we got just a short time left, and I think it's only fair that maybe we talk about Jeff a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Jeff Bell. No now. offense, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. You, sh you should have been here, dude. Yeah, my my business partner, friend, road dog, amigo. Uh, you know, we uh, we're we're business partners, but at the same time, we're very close friends. Uh, and he and his lovely wife, Kimberly. Uh, you know, uh, they're just really great people. Uh, and you know, you have to be able to trust you know whoever you're in business with. Yep. And because otherwise, then you know, then it's you know you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You you know you feel the need to bring a third party in just to kind of. 
and uh, you know, and I trust him. You know, there's uh, and we have that mutual trust. Uh, we both share the same philosophies, which makes things very easy in terms of running the team overall. There's no conflict, uh, you know, with regard to our philosophy, our mission statement, and our goal statement. Uh, you know, they came from the heart. Uh, and That's obvious. Yeah. It, it it really is. And and like I said, when I see some of your guests and and players that come in. Um, it, it's obvious to me that you guys are very, very passionate about what you're doing. Well, you know, it's been a labor of love. Sometimes it's like, what in the hell am I doing? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, man. I know that feeling. <laughs> but more importantly, you know, John, we've always tried to emphasize it's not just about winning, you know, and, and it's about, you know, you making a statement and leaving a, a positive footprint. And so we try to get them out of the, it's about wins you know, or, or losses as the case may be. But it's what you were able to achieve and what you can take away from the program going right. forward. Well, if, if even if you win every game and you're a jerk, you're still a jerk. Still a jerk. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, <laughs> so, like I said, I was really impressed in reading your mission statement and your goal, and uh, we're very, very happy to have you and, and, and uh, Vegas Lions Football part of Vegas All Net Radio. Um, you know the kind of shows and the kind of people that we want to build on. So, well, well I tell you what, on behalf of uh, Jeff and myself, we're very thankful to VANR. Um, you know, your ex ever expanding roster of shows means that you're absolutely doing something right. We hope so. And the transition was very seamless for us, so it was a very easy decision for us good, to make. Good, we're glad. Well, we're all happy, so we're kind of all one big happy family here. And, uh, Bill, I'd like to thank you for coming in and taking the time from your day. Uh, pleasure, we appreciate John. it. Thank you. And uh, look forward to a long and happy relationship here. Um, thank you all for listening and watching. And uh, come back next week when we'll have a very special guest who I forget who it was. So thank you all. Anything you got about 10 seconds, Bill? You want to say Thanks. anything? Oh, too late. Never mind. No, <laughs> no. Go ahead. Stay tuned tomorrow. <laughs> Noon. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time to What's going to happen then? Vegas Lions Weekly Radio Show on VANR. Excellent. Thank you all, and uh, we'll see you next week.